So there's a lot of great functions in Excel that can take a portion of a text string and divide it into individual components. We all probably know about the left, right and mid functions and there's even some newly released functions that are even better like text before, text after and text split. I'll leave a link to the video I've recently done down below. The problem with all of these functions, they rely on an identifier which clearly represents the divisions of the text string. What do we do, however, when there are no identifiers, like in our data set here? How can we divide this string into individual text portion and an individual number portion, especially when the character count of text values and the character count of numerical values can be different across the entire data set? we can use our own custom built functions. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you today. Before we start tackling the main problem, let's get familiar with what exactly custom functions are and how we can set one up. Our worksheet here contains a data set of two number lists, list number one and list number two. Let's say we want to create a function that will multiply a number in list one times a number in list two. I've kept this example quite simple so we can focus on the VBA code required to set up a function rather than the complexity of the problem itself. To access the VBA editor within Excel, navigate to the developer tab and then in the code group, click Visual Basic. This will open a new VBA editor window. VBA code is stored within what is called modules, so we will need to insert a new module by navigating to the Insert tab and then choosing Module. This is the space or surface where we will now write our function code. To tell VBA we're going to create our own custom function, we need to use the declaration Public Function, and then we can give our function a name. This is the name that will appear within Excel, just as we see for function names like sum if or VLOOKUP. We're going to be multiplying two numbers together, so I'm going to call this function multiply. Our declaration actually doesn't stop here. It's at this point that we need to tell VBA what arguments or inputs we're expecting our function to be given by the user. In our example, we're expecting the user to give the function two numbers a number from list one and a number from list two, which will then be multiplied together. We can think of these as the variables the user provides to the function as inputs. So let's define the two variables we expect the user to provide to the function. Both of these are numbers. So I'm going to call the first variable number one, and we need to set the data type within the function as a range, seeing as the user will provide a cell reference. We separate the function's input by using a comma, and now we can define our second input, which will just be number two again as a range. Now we can close the bracket, so we have our function name along with the inputs we expect the user to provide. We can see that once we've finished our declaration, VBA automatically introduces the end function keywords. Now we need to write the code between these two declarations, which will complete the action we want our function to take. In this example, it's quite simple, of course. We just want to multiply two numbers together, so we set the function value, which is multiply, equal to number one, and multiply it by number two, and that's it. If I go back to Excel and type equals into cell C2 and then start to write multiply, you will see that my custom function is now available within the Excel function library. We can use this function just like we use any other function. Let me set the first argument to be cell A2 and let me set the second argument to be cell B2. Once I finish providing the arguments to the function, I can close the bracket and evaluate. Let me fill down the formula for the rest of these cells. And just as we expect, all of the numbers within their corresponding columns have been multiplied together. So the function does its job. So to recap, we need a couple of building blocks for our custom function. We need to start and end declarations. We need the function's name and the function input. 
And finally, we need the formula to assign to the function output. Now that we have the basics covered, let's try and create the two separate functions we need for this problem. One that will extract the text portion of our string and another that will extract the number portion. I'll remove this code. The first thing that we want to do is again declare a public function. Let's start with extracting the text portion first so we can call this function split letters. The only input we need for this function will be the cell containing the text value we're interested in splitting. So let's declare a variable called user input as a range and close the function brackets. So what do we need this function to do for us? Well, we want this function to observe every single character contained within the string. If the character is a text character, then we want that individual character to be added to our final function output value. But there's still one problem here. How do we tell VBA that a character is a text character or a numerical character? To do this, we can take a look at the character code scale. Every character within Excel has an equivalent numerical code. The alphabet for capital letters starts at 65 and ends at 90. And then the alphabet of lowercase letters starts at 97 and ends at 122. In Excel, we can check the character code of any character using the code function, which will simply convert the character into a standardized numerical scale. Just like text characters, numerical characters also have an equivalent code. On the code scale, you can see zero starts at the character code of 48. And this extends all the way to 57 for our numerical value of 9. Now that we know we have a numerical scale of values, we can check where each of the individual characters of our string lies on that scale. And based on this, we can determine if it's a text character or a numerical character. So let's go back to our function. We want to create a loop that's going to loop through every single one of the individual characters. So for this, we're going to need a start and an end point for the loop. I'm going to declare a variable here called text length, which will give us the count of characters within our string. I'm going to set this variable equal to, and then use the len function followed by the user input variable. This means that the value assigned to the text length variable will be the numerical count of characters within my string. I'll declare one more variable here i as long and then we can start our loop. We can say for i equal to 1 to our variable text length, please complete an action and when you completed that action, please move to the next value of i. The action that we want to take here will be conditional on the character contained within the string, which is picked up from the user input. If we go back to the character codes tab for a moment, we can see that all of the alphabet characters, both uppercase and lowercase, are contained within the numbers 65 to 122. So the if statement we write needs to check each of the characters and their corresponding character code individually one by one. And if the character code value is between 65 and 122, then our new text string should contain that character. In VBA, there's actually an equivalent function to the code function of the Excel library, and that function is called ASC. So our logical test is going to say if, and then we can use the ASC function followed by the mid function. The string that we need to give the mid function is the user input. The starting point within our string will be the variable i, seeing as every time the loop runs, we want the character that is considered to be moved along one place, and the amount of characters that we want to check during each loop will be one character. We want to check the output of this function is greater than or equal to 65. So that takes care of the lower bound, but for the upper bound, let's use the AND keyword. And then we can copy and paste our first conditional check. But let's change the greater than sign to a less than sign. And finally, let's change the upper bound value to be 122. Now we can use the then keyword so we have a space to write our if statement's true action. We can close the if statement with the end if keyword. 
So if the statement that we have written is true, meaning the character we are checking is actually a text character and not a numerical character, then we want to build a new string and that new string is going to be the value of the function. So let's say our function name, split letters, is going to be equal to the function's value. Split letters again, followed by the character, which we are currently working on. And this will be output from the mid function. We can give the mid function the user input again, followed by the start point variable and the character of one. So that's it. That's all the code that we're going to need to write. Let's move over to Excel now and check if this function actually works. Within cell B2, let's start to write our function's name, which is split letters. Okay, so far so good. We can see that the function name is appearing. Let's give the function the one input it needs, which is the cell reference we're interested in. When we evaluate, we get only the text portion for the first dataset entry. Let me fill this down to see if it works correctly in a dynamic fashion. Perfect, all of this looks great. From our example here, we can see that all of the text happens to be grouped at the start of our transaction ID, and all the numbers happen to be grouped at the end of our transaction ID. But what happens if there are some text values at the start and at the end of the string with numbers in between? I have an example here that I'm going to paste within cell A16. You can see it contains the first three characters of the word London, followed by a number sequence, and then the last three characters of the word London. Do you think our function will be able to correctly extract all of the text values for an example like this? Let me copy and paste down the function formula. So perfect, only the text portion of the cell's value are extracted by our function. Because our function checks every single character one by one and then builds a new string, it doesn't matter if all of the text is contained at the start, the middle, or all mixed up with other numbers. We still have another function that we're going to need to write. We have successfully extracted the text portions but what about the number portions? Well, we've actually done all of the hard work already. For the number portions, we just need to make a very small adjustment to the function, which we've already written. So let me copy and paste the split letters function below. I'll change the name from split letters to split numbers. And we can also change the function name within the if portion of the code. The last thing to do here will be to change the upper and lower bounds of the conditional check. If we go back to our character codes worksheet, you will see that the numerical character codes starts at 48 and ends at 57. So I need to change the lower bound to be 48 and then I can go ahead and change the upper bound to 57. So that's it. That's all the changes we need to make. We can go back to Excel and check if the function does its job correctly. Within cell C2, I'll type the split numbers function and then I'll give the function the cell reference A2 as an argument. It's worked correctly for the first example. Let's fill down to check if it works dynamically. And great, as we expected, all of the numbers have been extracted from the values contained within column A of our data set. If you've always had a function on your wish list that you'd hope Microsoft would develop, you don't need to wait any longer. Now you know that you can create your own functions and you can probably do it very quickly by using VBA. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about macros and VBA code, feel free to check out my comprehensive course on macros and VBA. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.